today I wanted to give you guys a top five luxury chronographs. So let's get right into it. Coming in at number one is one that I feel is totally underappreciated considering its history and that is the Zenith El Primero. The El Primero was actually the first Swiss high beat automatic chronograph movement and it was really a groundbreaking movement because it was the first of its kind. Although it technically wasn't first to market, that was Seiko actually who made the first automatic chronograph movement, Zenith was definitely one of the first and it was a movement that is historic even to this day based on its history and based on its use by other brands. Take for example the Rolex Daytona and the reference 16520 that actually featured a modified El Primero movement. At the beginning of the quartz crisis, Zenith actually demanded all of their watchmakers to completely destroy all of the equipment and schemes to ultimately build the El Primero movement to regulate it to finish it and so on. And so Zenith really thought that the future was quartz and so it was almost the end of the El Primero movement as we know it today. However, it was because of the heroics of one watchmaker by the name of Charles Vermeaux who actually took his brother-in-law and defied the orders of Zenith the company and literally hid all of the schemes and equipment to build the El Primero movement in an attic that you can actually visit today and is now part of actually the Zenith manufacturer and is a museum for Zenith because of that history. Now the El Primero movement is not only historic, but it's been featured in a number of watches, one of which that I already mentioned, the Rolex Daytona, but it's also been featured by the likes of, say for example, Daniel Roth, one of the most important independent watchmakers who really revived Breguet in the 70s and 80s. The Zenith El Primero has a number of distinctive characteristics. However, Zenith has done a great job to really modify and expand the line so that you can find the model that has an El Primero movement, but in a design that really speaks to you. For me personally, my favorite is really the classic Chronomaster El Primero with the tri-colored subdials. That is the original and ultimately in my opinion, it is my personal favorite. But what's great is that you can get them in different variations and different price points to suit your needs and suit your collection and suit your personal taste and style. And so that gives you a variety and adaptability that just can be found in many other watches and especially with chronographs themselves. I love the Zenith El Primero personally, and I definitely feel it belongs in a list of top five luxury chronographs, given its history, given what it went through and almost disappeared completely, and given the fact that it's been used by other watches in this list. In fact, the second watch, which is one of the most iconic chronographs, arguably one of the most iconic watches ever, and that is the Rolex Daytona. Now the Daytona has a very murky history to be fair, it's almost technically a bit of a failure as a watch. It was originally the Cosmograph before it was the Daytona because it actually entered the space race along with the Speedmaster and other watches to be the first watch worn on the moon. And when Rolex ultimately failed at achieving that and was beat out by the Speedmaster, it became the Rolex Cosmograph Daytona as we know it, associating itself with the Daytona 500 races, which really rose to prominence in the 80s and 90s, which is when ultimately the name change occurred. Now the Rolex Daytona comes in many variations, both in vintage and in modern, but even when you take into account its modern format, it is technically Again, a little bit of a failure when you think about it, right? Because it doesn't have pump pushers, you actually have to unscrew the pushers, and then once you're ready to actually time whatever it is you need to time, by the time you're done unscrewing the pushers, it's already over, the race is done, you can't even get to time what you need to do. And so design-wise, that's kind of a flaw in my opinion for the Rolex Daytona. But there's no denying its history and its pedigree makes it one of the most collectible watches for that very reason, because it has a bit of a failure of a past and because it's one of Rolex's most complicated watches, there's just not that many out there and so collectors in mass really want to get their hands on one. Of course, there's been a number of historic variations in precious metal, in two-tone, and in steel, and so you can really get the version that really speaks to you the most. And what's great about the Daytona, at least the modern ones, is you have a lot of flexibility and adaptability with respect to your style and taste. And that is, of course, if you can get one at retail, which, let's be honest, none of us can. But at the end of the day, you can always purchase one on the secondary market. Another fact that ultimately makes the Daytona collectible is that it was one of, if not the most expensive watches ever sold at auction. That's right, it was worn by the style icon himself, Paul Newman, and that watch actually sold at auction for over $18 million back in 2017. And I actually used that kind of as a reference point for when the watch market really went crazy because 
After 2017, it just felt like watches weren't really available like they used to be at authorized dealers. And it's when we kind of saw the st start of the sports watch craze and the crazy prices we see today on the secondary market. So all of those factors combined make the Daytona one of the most iconic chronographs ever. And so it needed to be featured on a list of top five luxury chronographs. Moving up the horological ladder, we're going to talk about a brand that I personally am a huge fan of and of a watch that I feel is one of, if not the very best manual wind chronographs ever made. And that is the A. Langen Zone Datagraph. It was actually a watch that was released in 1999 and it really took the watch world by storm. In fact, it completely embarrassed the Swiss, not for anything. So interesting history is actually Patek Philippe launched the reference 5070 in 1998, one year prior to the Datagraph. Now that was one of the first manual wind chronographs that Patek had released in almost 40 years. And it featured a Lamagna base movement, the Lamagna 2310. Now, while that is a historic chronograph to register chronograph movement and it is wonderful and it's been used by a number of other brands historically it isn't an in-house movement and so technically by the standards of today's watchmaking it was a little bit outdated and frankly paddock could have done maybe a little bit better and so when the datagraph was released in 1999 with a brand new in-house movement and with that stunning movement architecture it really took the swiss watch world by storm and really the entire watch industry it had been so long since we'd seen a new manual wind chronograph movement of that caliber and frankly with that kind of finishing and pedigree that really nothing competed with it until Paddock released their own in-house movement almost a decade later. And so when you take a look at it in the landscape of those kind of higher horology uh, chronographs without obviously getting into the hyper complicated ones, the perpetual calendar chronographs and so on, I feel that the A. Langen Zone datagraph is one that must make a top five luxury chronograph list because of that history, because of the fact that it was really a groundbreaking watch for its time in 1999, which also happens to be my birth year, but it truly cannot be understated just how important of a release it truly was. Now watch number four really needs no introduction. It is the watch that beat out the Daytona to space. It is the original moon watch and that is the Speedmaster Professional. Now of course there have been a number of variations over the years but the icon really is the one that went to the moon. Uh, it all originated with the CK2915 which was actually a racing chronograph to start with and then became the Speedmaster Professional as we know it as Omega entered the space race to ultimately be the first watch worn on the moon which it did achieve. Now the Speedmaster is a model line that has rich history and that has a ton of variations. And so what's great about it is that you can really pick and choose the one that speaks to you the most. It also comes at a variety of price points. And so you can really fit it towards your budget, whether you're getting an automatic version or a manual wine version, whether you're getting one in a steel case or a precious metal case, whether you're getting a limited edition or just the standard Moonwatch Speedmaster Professional, I think, frankly speaking, you just can't go wrong considering the pedigree, the history, and frankly speaking, the iconic status of the Omega Speedmaster. And so for that reason, I feel the Omega Speedmaster belongs on any list of top five luxury chronographs, and that's why I ultimately included it today. Now, number five on the list, I wanted to choose something that was a little quirky and different. And so this is really just my personal opinion, but I feel it definitely has merits of being on a top five luxury chronograph list. And the watch I'm talking about is the Tag Heuer Monaco. This was a watch that was made famous because it was featured in the movie Le Mans back in 1971 on the wrist of the man himself, Steve McQueen. And I feel this is a watch that still has a very classic and contemporary design, given the fact that it's like over 50 years old now at this point. And yet it's something that's so unique and recognizable that it gets a ton of respect from watch collectors because you can really notice it from a mile away. Now for the fans of Breaking Bad out there, actually this was a watch that Jesse Pinkman gifted to Walter White. And so I think that's a tidbit of history that is kind of cool and interesting. And that does make me enjoy the Tag Heuer Monaco even more. And again, this is one of those watches that you can get a ton of variations of. Although my favorite is still the classic Steve McQueen version with that blue dial and those red accent. It really makes for a really fun, quirky watch that at the end of the day is super recognizable. And in my opinion, belongs on a top five luxury chronograph list. Now, of course, this is just my opinion. There's a number of other watches that didn't make the list that definitely have merits to be on it, such as the Breitling Navitimer, even the Tudor Black Bay Chronograph, which I really like. And of course, how can I not mention the iconic manual wine chronographs from Patek Philippe? 
But of course, again, I would love to hear your suggestions down in the comments below. Let me know what you think of my list and what are your top five favorite luxury chronographs. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Of course, I'd ask for you guys to hit the like button to subscribe for more videos in the future. And guys, I'll see you in the next one.